Say the fearless kingdom. How many know we're a part of God's fearless kingdom? So, and, and here's another thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to submit to you. If fear has been an area in your family and in your life like a generational bondage, then you're going to really want to track that thing down because that fear is guaranteeing your defeat. So fear, it can't be tolerated, it can't be played with. It's not your pet, it's not your friend. It's, it's not, you don't want, even in the area of being, want, you wanting people to feel sorry for you, all that's got to go. That's all part of that fear. You don't need sympathy. You need compassion. Are you hearing me? You don't, you don't need somebody to feel sorry for you. I'm not a dog that you need to feel sorry for. Are you hearing me? You can have compassion on me, but no, I don't need all that because that's going to move me into fear. So number one, the violent will take it by force. In Matthew eleven twelve 12 says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, and I want you to read it out loud with me. Say the kingdom of heaven uh, suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So there, there it is. I mean, there you are. You're, there, you're right there. You are violent in the spirit and you take it by force. So there it is. So I'm not a violent person. You don't have to be naturally, but in the spirit, if you're going to be somebody who possesses the promises of God, you're going to have to learn to be violent. You, you're going to have to learn how to fight. You're going to have to learn how to fight. If you're going to clap, then clap and give him praise. Come on, somebody. You're going to have to learn how to fight. And sometimes we can be so beat down by life that we don't want to fight anybody. But when God's going to strengthen you, he's going to uphold you, he's going to empower you, and you're going to be a great fighter for God. Great fighter. I believe that. God didn't bring you into this ministry and put you under a fighter to make you not a fighter. You, you're, he puts you under me because I'm going to make you, by the grace of God, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to help you to become a fighter, a good fighter, a winner, a champion, never taking no for an answer. Even when you get knocked down, you get back up because you got God helping you and you got grace on your life. Matthew 16, 18. This is interesting. I want you to read it with me and say, and I say to you that you are Peter, okay? Peter. Peter, before he was Peter, was Simon. Simon meaning unstable, unruly, undependable, unreliable. So God took Simon and he prophesied his destiny. You're not going to be this unstable guy, unruly. You're going to be Peter. And on this rock, I'm going to build my church. So he's telling you he's going to build the church on unstable, unruly, undisciplined people, but he doesn't plan us to stay that way. He's going to make the unruly, undisciplined, unreliable, unfaithful, undependable. He's going to make them reliable, dependable, faithful. Thank God for that. And he says, on this principle, I'm going to build my church on these type of people. So no matter how they come in, all broken, they don't listen to parents, they don't listen to authority, they don't, they don't listen to anybody. They, they, they're rebellious, they're unfaithful. I'll be, there, I'll be there right now and they come an hour later, come on. Or they never show at all. Oh, I'm going to use these people and I'm going to build my church on these type of people. Isn't that interesting? Nobody would do that, but God does that because he's confident in his power and in his ability to change us. Don't be intimidated because you're not changing. You are changing. You may not know it, but you are. For the Bible said, he that began a good work in you is faithful. How do you know you're changing? Well, you're in church on a Sunday morning. That's a change. Come on. All right, let me keep going. And then he says, I'm going to build my church. And this is an interesting statement. And the gates of hay or hell, gates of hell, will not prevail against it. So God's like, I'm going to build my church location. You know, real estate. Location, location, location. Okay, where's the location, Lord? Prime real estate. Come on, show me where it's at. Prime real estate. Hold on. Let me look up. Let me call the angel Gabriel. Gabriel. Show me the prime real estate where we're going to build our next church. I found it, Lord. Where is it? Right here. Good spot. Yes, where is it? It's right on the gates of hell. <laughs> prime real estate. Because hell always takes the prime real estate. <laughs> and we have to come and God said, I want to build my church right there in hell's prime real estate. Where all the people are. Where all the brokenness, where all the sin is. We're all, we're all the demonic activity. That right there, I'm going to use unstable, unreliable, undependable, unfaithful people. I'm going to change them. And right there, I'm going to build my church through them. Come on, clap like God is faithful. Heavy. Think about what I'm saying. It's heavy stuff. So if you're like the kind of Christian that's like, I don't like war, Christianity. I don't like all this fighting stuff. I don't like all that. Then you're not really wanting to serve God. Because there's no way you're going to do great things for God and fulfill your destiny without having to build the church right there in the gates of hell. By just that statement alone lets you know you're going to be in a battle. You're going to be in some fights. You're going to be in some wars. You're going to be battle tested. But in the end, if you do it God's way, you're going to have everything that the devil had 
is going to be in your living room, on your driveway, at your table. And you're going to eat your meal right in the presence of the enemy. Some of you want that nice, you know, steak with the bone in it. Tomahawk. But the devil got your tomahawk. So you got to come over to that devil and say, give me my tomahawk. No, that's my tomahawk. No, that's my tomahawk. No, that's my tomahawk. Now the fight's on. He says, no, you say yes. And with you and God, you're going to get your tomahawk steak. <laughs> Speed never even had a tomahawk. Trust me, it's worth it. <laughs> Can I keep going? All right, so let's talk about this. What, taking what belongs to us, or you and me, through spiritual warfare. Say, spiritual warfare. Spiritual. Somebody say, spiritual, spiritual. Warfare. warfare. All right, Ephesians 6. Uh, Paul's breaking it down 12 through 13, 16, and 17. I recommend you read all of Ephesians 6, 12. And I mean, really, Ephesians 6, it's amazing on warfare. But there's some powerful principles we're going to talk about today. Paul says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So that's the first principle there. Somebody say, the power of God. Now, oh, man, can I help you? Do you want to be a winner in life? Wave at me if you want to be a winner. All right, I'm going to give you my secret, okay? I'm not even going to charge you for this. Somebody gave me $100 earlier, so uh, that's going to be for this little secret, all right? I'll give you credit for all you. I'm going to give you, can I give you a secret? You don't want this secret. Come on, I'm trying to help you here. You, I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I'm going to drop a word. It's going to be simple, but the things of God are simple, but yet profound. If you want to be a very successful person, and you want to win with God and in God, you got to be somebody who loves, honors, respects the power of God. See that? When Not everybody gets the power of God. Not every Christian gets the power of God. You remember this story where there's this woman, and she's sick for 12 years. And she has, she was a wealthy woman, but because of the sickness, she spent all her money on the doctors, which we love doctors, but in this case, it didn't work out for her. It was an incurable sickness. She had, a, 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 she was bleeding. And she was dying. And she lost her marriage, her children, her family, her finance, her health, her dignity. But the Bible says that when Jesus was walking by, she reached out and she took from him, remember this, power. And when the power went from Jesus into her, it healed her. And then Jesus turned around and said, now go, go and get, you have shalom. Meaning, go and take back everything the enemy stole. But the miracle in her life was the power of God. This is, the, this, is, this, is, this is right here, like, this is the X factor. This is, this is the man coming off the bench. This is like the sixth man of the year. This is like LeBron James coming off the bench. Don't hate, celebrate. Lakers, let's go. If you can't celebrate my victory, come on, somebody. So, but it's like the power of God is a game changer. Like, like I, I love the power of God. And from the moment I got saved, that's what, that's what changed me. I, I'm, I'm, my mom invites me. She's here. My beautiful mom. She, and she looks younger every time I see her. It's weird. It's the power of God. It's that anointing oil, mom. See? See? But she says, Jason, want to go to the concert? And I'm like, nah, but, you know, they raided our house last week or two weeks ago, and you're mad at me, so I got to make it up for you, to you. So, yeah, I'll go to your concert, ma. And she, 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 she doesn't say Christian, because right there I'm like, what? And then I'm like, lights. Is there lights? Because acid, lights. I like that stuff. She's like, a lot of lights. She knew, too. She's like, yeah, a lot of lights. Like, All right. I took my acid. I go to the concert. Yeah. yeah. Wow, man. It's awesome. Ah. I'll tweet that out. And then I get hit. Boom. 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 I get smashed on. And then all of a sudden something weird happens. I sober up, acid's gone. It's kind of freaky. That ain't never happened to me. I look at my mom like, voodoo, what the, what's happening? And she's just playing it off. <laughs> the power is moving. And then something weird happens, a tear, which I never cried. One, and then a lot of tears, and then like that. And then I brought this crazy girl with me. She was high too, and then I'm like, oh no, she's gonna see me crying. I'm crying, and I couldn't help it. It just kept coming, and I felt it, and it was like I could breathe for the first time in my life. Oh, and then I ran to the front, 
because I realized the power is coming from that dude up there. <laughs> that dude got the power. <laughs> and I was that, at least I was that smart to go, that guy, has, I ran to the front before they even made the salvation call because I realized it's coming off that guy. And I ran there, and that day I gave my life to the Lord. And that was the beginning of my encounter with the power of God. And from that day till this day, all I've had in my life is one encounter after another with the power of God. And that's the one thing that the devil has no cure for. You don't need to be a theologian. You don't need to be the, the, know all the scriptures. You're going to learn that one day. But in the meantime, the power of God's like your safety net. And that thing can give you victory if you constantly stay under it. So I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I couldn't talk right. Hmm. Because that's what happened to me, sin. But one thing I learned is if I'm in the power of God, I feel normal. I feel better. I'm depressed. I'm suicidal. I'm maniac still a little bit. But when I get in the power, I'm like normal. I feel happy. I have joy. So I put two and two together. The more I'm with the power, the less I'm like that. Right? That's why, like, we're having church, like we're having church, and, and we're, like, dancing all crazy. It's like, why are you doing that? Because I know when praises go up, power comes down. The power of God, the power of God, the power of God is everything to me. I love the anointing. I love it. I, I, I want more of it. I need more of it. And it's when the, and that's why Paul said, before we talk about spiritual warfare and we talk about armor and we talk about all your weapons, which we're going to talk about this month. How many want to learn about all your weapons? Yeah. Okay. But before we go there, the first weapon is that power. Don't you remember? What did he tell them? He says, hey, don't go anywhere. But go into Jerusalem and tarry in the upper room until what? Until you get power from on high. And they got that power. They got tongues. And they were filled with that power of God. That's why I speak in tongues all the time. So I don't speak. I don't believe in tongues. I'm like, that's the worst thing for you, not to believe in tongues. Because speaking in tongues literally, it's like, it literally means to put like a battery charge. Like your iPhone dies. And you charge it, that's what tongues does. It charges you up with the power of God. If you want victory, you have to honor, love, and go after the power of God. That's why, like, like Lifestyle of Freedom, it's such a powerful class, class because we have two teachings, and then we have what we call encounter time every single night. You say, why, Pastor? Why don't you just do teaching? Because I love teaching, but also you need power. You need power because without the power, then you're missing that huge element of your victory. The power of God is indescribable. The power of God, you can't calculate it, but it's real. Pharaoh knew it was real when it knocked his teeth out and ripped him apart and destroyed his kingdom. He knew the power of God was real. He didn't believe it until he got laid out. But then he really believed in the power of God. Are you hearing me? And the devil sometimes will just, ah, but when the power smacks him upside the head, he will back off. They got power. Come on, shout like you got power. The power of God's real. And I pray that we move in more of that. Somebody say power. power. Can I keep going further or no? I got five minutes. How many will give me five minutes? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay. Nah, 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 nah. I got to get ready for the game. No, now watch this. Now watch, watch, watch. Say, put on the whole armor of God. Not, not a little piece of it, the whole thing. Say the whole thing. Okay, so if you have the armor of God on, look at, look at, say, you will be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes, and the strategies of the devil. See, the devil's smarter than us. He's been around way longer than us, Right? But God says, when you put my armor on, it doesn't matter how smart he is. It doesn't matter how long he's been around. It doesn't matter all his little schemes and his tricks and his tra all his little, all, every trick in his bag. None of it will work when you put my armor on. When you put my armor on, you're guaranteed, guaranteed, like Charles Barkley, guaranteed victory in every single fight with the enemy. Guar I guarantee it, God says. How many want a guarantee Victory. That rhymes, huh? Guarantee victory. Tell your neighbor that. Guarantee victory if you wear God's armor. 
And then verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle, this is heavy, against flesh and blood. I could preach that right there. Think about, I'm going to say something. If you want to lose to the devil, start thinking people are your enemy. That's the first thing God taught me when I got saved. He said, Jason, all your life people have told you you're a victim. When you were seven years old, your dad left you. You're a victim. Chip on my shoulder. Then my stepdad raised me all my life. I feel like Nacho Libre. All of my life. And he literally abused me every day. Like, it was not a day I wasn't abused. And that was for, like, 10 years straight. Every day. So the man in my life that I was supposed to look up to left me. Then the other man abused me every day. And because of that, I believed I was a victim. And I was a victim. And I had a chip on my shoulder like a victim. And a victim, you can do one of two things. You can stay like passive or you can become aggressive. I became an aggressive victim. Basically, no one's ever going to hurt me again. So I was the guy, like the crazy guy on the road, and you flip him off, and he like tries to ram your car, jumps off, and tries to hit you. (laughs) And you think, that guy's got a problem. That was Pastor Jay before. (laughs) Don't look at me. Some of you is crazy like that too. (laughs) One or two of you. I know, I know. And I was the guy at the party, like, you know, there's certain people everyone invites to the party. They're cool. And then there's that one guy no one invites. And they don't invite him. And they give him a name. They call him Snapper. That guy's a snapper. He's cool until he gets drunk, and then he wants to fight everybody. That was me. You know when you, like some people, you start serving God, you go into church, and your friends want to make, take you to the back to the backslide of club or whatever. They come and try to, that never happened to me. When they found out I was in the home and all that, they, they would, this is what they would say, good job, stay there. <laughs> and I hear the pastors preach like, and your friends are going to try to pull you to the world. I'm like, wow. <laughs> like one time one of my friends came, he go like that, he go like, he go, good job. He stayed with you, good job. <laughs> because I had that victim attitude, punch you in the face attitude. That was, that was kind of what I hung my hat on. And then I was short, so that didn't help. Now you're short, against me against the world, been abused, left, left for dead. I mean, come on, somebody. I mean, I'm like a walking attitude. If you want to define attitude in the thesaurus, it would have been me. I even had a look. People like look at me, and I'm done. I'm like, what are you looking at? And they're like, your shoes are cool. Oh. Like driving out, looking for people to stare at. Uh, Cuckoo. And then I get saved, and God starts telling me this right away. Flesh and blood is not your enemy. And it was like a big one. What do you mean? And And then it was like all the people that I worked with in God were like attitude Christians to me, where it was really hard not to think of them as my enemy. Remember one guy in particular, it was, he was real funny. He would, he would uh, we'd have to clean the church because we were part of the recovery home. So we'd clean the church. It was an honor. I was cleaning the church and the chairs and everything, the pulpit, praying in tongues. La, 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 And then I'd, act, I'd, I'd get behind the pulpit, act like I was preaching, come over here. <laughs> and then the pastor would walk in, and this one brother, he was a leader. He was a big guy, big guy. And he had a big old booty like that. And, and, and I'd be vacuuming, ooh, this is the day that the Lord has made. And he'd see the pastor come in and see me, and he'd walk up to me and booty me, boom, grab the vacuum and like that. And then, and then I'm sitting there like an idiot, like, and the pa- my pastor would go like that, look at me, and then look at this guy. And I'd hear those words, flesh and blood is not your enemy. 
I remember a few times I saw myself in the middle of the night choking him out. I can't be real, Mom. They, they, they all Christian all their lives. See, they're all saved. They never had these kind of thoughts. And I, and I had to tell no, no, flesh and blood, not your enemy. And it was weird. God put me in that kind of position over and over and over. And then finally when I started working, every boss I had, Christian boss, was like mean like that. And I'm thinking, God, am I cursed? Like, I go, phone job, doing that. And God's like, no, I'm trying to teach you people are not your enemy. So why are you saying that? Because right now, this is what the devil's trying to push in our nation. People are your enemy. People are your enemy. People are your enemy. You're a victim. You're a victim. You're a victim. I was a victim, but now I'm victorious. And nobody can stop the power of God in your life. No man, no system, no devil, no situation. Because when you make up in your mind that you will be what God says you can be, there is no devil in hell that can stop the power of God. Don't let nobody call you a victim anymore. We all can be victims, right? Think about it. Like, I could sit there today and, hey, Dad, let me, 46-year-old. I wouldn't have kids, wouldn't have my family, none of you would be here, but I decided, and I had to fight my way through it, going to college, and the devil said, you're stupid, you don't belong here, you're an idiot. No, 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 I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm what God said I am. Fight my way through it. Learning, flesh and blood is not my enemy. I don't fight people, I fight demons. And this is another thing. Come on, let me, and I got to close, late. Here's another thing. This is warfare. You ready? I had to forgive. That's part of it. I had to forgive my dad. Yeah, you left me. But you know what? I either forgive and go on and be successful or live in my bitterness. And the devil has me. I got to forgive my stepdad, my stepsister, my stepbrother, every X, every O, and I had a lot of them, trust me. I had a whole book. Whatever. <laughs> Come on. And I had to let it go. And even to this day, when people hurt me, I got to let it go. Because I know if I'm holding on to that thing, now, how am I going to put the armor on? Because the first thing it says there, what? The armor of God, you're not dealing with people. So if I'm offended at people, the devil's got me right where he wants me. Be very careful what you allow into your heart. People are not your enemy. You love people. Black people are not your enemy. White people are not your enemy. Brown people are not your enemy. Yellow people are not your enemy. Nancy Pelosi is not your enemy. Donald Trump's not your enemy. Joe Biden's not your enemy. Don't, don't, don't bite. No, no. No, no. The devil is your enemy. He's trying to stop you, block you, and hold you back. Nah. And I had to fight my way through it. All the way through it. I remember going to Bible college, walking, and people were driving, and, and they, had, you know, they were blessed. Their parents were blessed. Their parents served God, so they give their kids nice cars and money. And the devil tried to make me bitter at that, because I didn't have the opportunity that these other kids had, because they had the money and they had the nice cars, and I was walking in the rain for years. But God taught me. They're blessed. One day your kids are going to be like that, blessed. Don't, don't, don't be bitter at them for being blessed. You fight your way through. And you, you create a new path for others that come behind you. That's why I have Bible college here. So you can be blessed. You don't have to walk in the rain. You can just come here on Sunday night. Come on, somebody. But a, vi a victim will never do that. Now we're going to start a school. A full school. Christian school here and then the other campus and other parents that maybe couldn't afford a regular one maybe they could afford this one and now they get a chance but a victim mentality doesn't think like that the victim is all about me it's all me I mean, what I've been through listen I've been through hell like a lot of you but you know what what are you going to do about it part of spiritual warfare is you have to you must you ready for it you have to I know as hard as it may seem you have to do this 
You have to let the dead bury the dead. And you say, whatever happened to me, molested, left, dropped, kicked, left for dead, talked about, hated. I mean, it's horrible, I know. But either I'm living in that or I'm going to go on with God. And I'm not, I can let the devil keep me there. I'm going to go on with God. I'm going to make up my mind. I'm going to let the dead bury the dead. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to release. I'm going to walk in love. And I'm going to serve God. And I'm going to prosper. I'm going to be in good health. I'm going to, I'm going to, my mind's going to be healthy. My, my body, my soul, everything in my life. That, you want to beat the devil? Start right there. Come on, give God a shout of praise. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's real good. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Now, I'm going to get you. I want to take you into another season on how to fight with the Word of God to obtain your promises. How many are believing for some big things? Big things? You believe God has a plan for your life? That, that's warfare. That's spiritual warfare. And the devil would tell me, God don't have nothing for your life. I feel the presence of God. And I want you to know God has a plan. And I felt the Holy Spirit says, I, I gotta say this right. Some of you here, you were in a relationship, and the person verbally beats you. Not just physically, which is horrible, but they, they, with their word, they put you down to control, manipulate you. And they beat you, beat you, and you really believe that you're you're that way, you're ugly, no one wants you, and it's in your mind. But God brought you here break that and he's going to show you who you really are and all that stuff you went through God by a supernatural power is going to take it all of it and I know this may not make sense but um, trust me when I tell you he's going to turn it all around for your good and not only are you going to come out but God's going to use you to go back to help people in those broken relationships and you're going to lift them out because we serve a supernatural God that gives supernatural armor with supernatural power and a supernatural victory. Come on, give him a praise in the room. I feel the anointing just broke something. Come on, give God a shout in the... Come on, somebody. Now, I want you to lift your hands to heaven and say, Lord, today I choose to walk in my victory. I will not allow Satan to defeat me anymore. And no matter what I've been through, and no matter what I've gone through, I say now, I'm no longer a victim. Because Jesus lives in me. And He's not a victim. He was a victim. But He didn't stay there. He rose on the third day. So I could be resurrected. So I'm no longer a victim. And I declare over my life, right now, greater is He that is in me than he that's in the world. And I declare, no weapon formed against me will prosper or succeed. For I am God's child, I have victory, I have armor, and I win, win, win in every area of my life. And lift your hands and say, now I worship my God. Now I bless my God because I am what God said I am. I will have what God said I could have. I will do what God said I could do. I will be what God said I'll be in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody worship God one more time. Thanks for watching Freedom. Be sure to check us out on all social media platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you soon.